Hi guys, you are looking at a 300,000 ringgit Hyundai. Uh, well, don't be surprised, it's not the first 300,000 ringgit Hyundai in Malaysia. If you recall, not too long ago, Hyundai also uh, offered the Genesis in our market. That is a 5 series rival, E class rival from Hyundai, um, priced well even higher than 300,000 ringgit. This one actually is comparatively cheaper. 298,888 ringgit only 20 units on offer and you buy them exclusively through Lazada so how it works is uh, you have to, to cough up a booking fee there's a booking fee of 2,000 ringgit you pay the first half of that booking fee 1,000 ringgit uh, on 2nd to, to, to 11th December all right, to is uh, to chop the car first lah. Basically, it's a pre-order, and then all right from 12 to 14 December, that is when you come up with the remaining 1,000 ringgit to complete the 2,000 ringgit booking fee. Um, yeah, and and that's and that sets you on your way to own the car. So um, so so the price tag of 290,000. 888 ringgit buys you not just the car but also um, the uh, it's an exclusive track day experience in Seoul South Korea okay so that is uh, a money can't buy experience once in a lifetime experience so basically your money buys you more than just the car but a point to note uh, is that if you had put down that 1000 ringgit pre-order pre-booking and for whatever reason you are unable to uh, cough up the rest of the money your deposit is burned okay gone bole out so let's look at the car this is the i30n uh, it is hyundai's answer to the volkswagen golf r the honda civic type r the renault megan rs um, it's front wheel drive powered by a 2 liter turbo engine making 275 PS so outputs wise it is down on all three against all three of the rivals mentioned above you, the Megan RS even with a 1.8 liter engine is already tuned to 290 PS so 275 from the Hyundai here is relatively conservative specification okay so drive goes to the front wheels via a six speed manual transmission and hyundai's performance data states 6.1 seconds 0 to 100 which is well nothing to shout about that really okay but still um overseas uh, reviews that that we have read uh, of this car has uh, have given it pretty good marks so we expect uh even if the even if the performance may the straight line sheer straight line performance may not be up to uh, may not be uh, on par with its rivals, you may expect some uh, magic coming from its ride and handling department. Now, I've actually driven the base i30, okay, the the the, the, the regular i30 recently uh, as a rental car in Australia, and uh, I was actually surprised to find that the 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 head the hand the basic fundamentals of that car is good okay are good uh the car drives well handles well it's tidy uh no major flaws other than the fact that it is a pretty plain vanilla offering but still the the important point to note is that because it has such um good you know well drilled fundamentals you can expect that this car, even if it's not that good, it won't be that bad either. Okay, so uh, still we have to wait and uh, wait for our chance to review this car if we can get it. Okay, um, Hyundai is probably going to be very selective of the people they choose to 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 have a go in this car. So let's see uh, whether we have a chance to to take this car out for a test drive or not, lah. So, we, without further ado, let's start with uh, with a walk around, explore the car. We start with the front end. Okay. So, for a, a performance hot hatch, let's think back. Let's think again. Once again, the Golf R, the Civic Type R, the Megan RS. The i30 N here uh, is a comparatively subdued in its styling. 
Okay, so yeah, you do get the red, uh, red strip there. You do get a bit more flare uh, vents, but it's not, uh, it's not an an outrageous design. It's not a full blown, uh, you know, very garang looking like Civic Type R FK8. Okay, it is a, it is com when you compare it with its rivals, it is relatively restrained. Uh, to 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 put to you to give you a metaphor, this really looks more. M spot than full on M performance. Okay, if you get my drift. So um, so we let's move to the side. Okay, now I'm not sure whether these stickers are meant to be there or not, lah. Huh? But um, well, I think the car. If you if you if you take them off, the car will probably look a lot cleaner. So we come to the side. Okay, you you can see right that that. Okay, the stickers are a bit of a distraction, but if you look at the side profile, right, the design is actually relatively clean. Look here on at this front fender. There, are, most of the time now, right, all these performance variants now we see the front fender. They put some when here and at this at this area. This one don't have. They they have kept the side profile very clean. No flares. Uh, no fattened wheel archers and all that. So yeah, I rather like the understatedness of it all. Okay, and uh, but they they did you know keep the lower section, this, all these lower sections of the car unpainted. Okay, that as a as a more subtle uh, expression of its sportiness. The brakes, of course, huge brakes hiding behind the wheels. Okay, we'll come over to this side. Let me just show you the rear brakes. All right, so painted calipers, painted red, and we'll see the back. Okay, so now here they've uh, the designers have given allowed themselves a bit of um, a bit of flare here by flaring this out. Okay, uh, but still overall, right when you come to the back here, you see it is a relatively clean design. Now because of the of the positioning, I can't show you the whole uh, the whole rear fascia in one shot in one frame. But I can take you take you through bit by bit. You can see the rear spoiler relatively subdued. There's a shark fin antenna there. The inverted triangular uh, third brake light up here. Okay, rear fog lights there, and you can see from here. Okay, the exhaust vents. Look at the exhaust pipes. Modestly sized. Okay, nothing too dramatic, and the diffuser elements are uh, occupy a relatively small amount of real estate okay uh, relative to the whole rear section the reverse camera is integrated under the uh, under the Hyundai logo here and let's pop open the boot so uh, you can see here boot space pretty decent and this is this is a, a, an adjustable floor so right now this this uh, this this floor here is uh, is you can uh, it's an adjustable level floor, so you can either push this down, put this down to get maximum loading space, which is pretty good uh, good loading space, or you can bring it up. Okay, raise it a little here. Uh, but you can you also see that there is a strut bar there to give a bit more stiffness to the chassis. All right, and here, let's come inside to the back. Okay. So fold down the seats. 6040 split folding. Now you can see uh, with the base model Hyundai had designed this to enable a flat loading floor, but this is obviously interrupted by this strut bar here. Okay, uh, which was is which net, which is of course not meant for the standard model, but uh, it's a compromise that I'm sure most enthusiasts are happy to make. When they jump from the standard i30, which we don't get here in Malaysia, to this i30N here. So we'll step inside. Okay, so we've got a pretty, uh, well, unremarkable armrest with two molded cup holders here. You've got panoramic sunroof. Um, the seats are good. Okay, you've got a good lean angle. Let's see if I can adjust. There's no adjust. I don't find the adjust uh, the adjusting mechanism, but the lean angle is good. I don't need further any any further recline. Thigh support. Thigh support also is good. Good leg room. 
but this one I really tabule tahan man I mean you see right at this price segment I think consumers will be expecting real air convents but if you don't provide it it's fine you can explain away by saying that uh, a vehicle this size you can do away with real air convents if you are clever in managing the flow just like how Mazda did with the Mazda 3 that one I was surprised with the Mazda 3 uh, recently I sat at the back of the Mazda 3 I felt that hey, even without real air convents there's good flow of air in front of the rear passenger here firstly I do not know how effective the, the, front, rear, uh, the front air convents are and I'm reminded by this depression here telling me that they supposed to be a set of rear air convents here that they had deleted so this one I absolutely don't understand so while I'm waiting for my turn to check out the cabin that's Eugene from Autobus here trying unsuccessfully Okay, so now I've got a window of, of opportunity to check out the cabin. I'll stay out of your frame. Can, 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 don't yeah. it's okay, it's okay. Say hi to the autobus guys. Hello. Hi. Thanks, hi Eugene. <laughs> okay. So let me just adjust the seat to stay out of Eugene's frame. I scared I scared I scared Jisima will fire him if I if I video bomb his video. Alright, so uh, here we have it. This is the cabin. Okay, uh, here in fact the material selection, the overall layout, it doesn't look much different from the Elantra or the Tucson that I've driven recently. Okay, uh, yeah, so here, but here this is the, the, the centerpiece, la, six speed manual transmission. Step on the clutch. The shifting here feels pretty solid, good. Uh, good travel good precision okay just uh, good but still that one needs to be experienced on the move lah all right so you can see here on the buttons here they're ventilated ventilated seats okay so you got wow got heated steering some more don't play play okay uh mechanical handbrake nice this is nice okay and let's check out the steering wheel so here you can see there's a button here for you to adjust drive mode and this, I presume, frees up track mode. You've got lane uh, lane keep assist, which is admirable. Okay, uh, seats are electrically adjustable, as you can see here. Okay, I'm moving myself forward again now that Eugene is done with his shooting. And uh, you've got memory function. Now that I move forward, I can try out the clutch pedal. Pretty light, okay, pretty light. Uh, of course, need to experience the the bike point and all when I drive lah. Huh? So the overall layout of the cabin pretty neat. Um, nothing too fancy. Material selection solid rather than spectacular. The feel is almost no different from an Elantra or a Tucson. Of course, you get these uh, semi bucket sport seats that give you a bit more side side support here. All right instrument cluster is unlit so i can't show you anything anything more and yeah so here we have it guys this is the um, the hyundai i30n okay um yeah 299,000 not cheap for a hyundai but uh kudos to them for launching this at all i think that you know for the past few years um uh the, the Hyundai brand is has has been in desperate need for some excitement. Okay, um, Hyundai makes good cars. They have every time when I drive a Hyundai, right? Uh, it is a I get the impression that it is a car with solid, well drilled fundamentals. But you know, they ultimately they don't have that final degree of excitement. This car has the promise of changing that.